Hello there and welcome to MIM TV, the official TV channel for Made in the Midlands. Today I have Charles Bonham with me, Managing Director of Bonham and Turner, and he's here to tell me a little bit more about your company, so if you'd like to let us know. Yeah, hi Abby. Uh, yeah, Bonham and Turner, uh, we're a precision engineering company um, and we've been uh, manufacturing since 1918 uh, and we supply a range of tooling components to various industries. What would you say is the um, biggest industry that you supply into? Um, in the most part now we, we, we supply the aerospace industry, that's the really the target market at this point in time. Um, and we, in the past we've supplied a lot to the automotive industry and we, we also supply a lot to uh, your heavy plant uh, industry such as Caterpillars, John Deere's and um, JCB's, uh, you know, more indirectly than directly. Um, but really, yeah, at this point in time, the aerospace, that's a target market and uh, we also supply a lot of product in the United States. Fantastic. And um, I mean, I know it's um, your 100th year anniversary coming up next year and um, you've got a lot of history from the company. Mm. I mean, you're fourth generation, is that right? Um, That's right, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about how it's uh, progressed over the years. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, it was founded by my great-grandfather, uh, John Bonham. Um, yeah, and really the uh, Bonham and Turner is a company. Um, it's always been owned by the Bonham family. Um, we don't really know who Turner was. Uh, the shares were bought out in the early years, which was you know 1918, mm -hmm. and it's really pretty much. I mean, it's, it's been a long history, obviously, but it, it, the shares have pretty much been passed down through two two sides of the family, um, and really, you know, the managing directors up today uh, are myself, you know, and we, you know that's uh, my side of the family, and then I have my cousin Peter Bonham, and he he owns the other shares, the, the other. Uh, uh, part of the shares and uh, the two of us run the company together. So, okay then. Mm. And um, is that how you'd best describe Bonham and Turner today then? It's um, still very much a family run company? What it was was uh, John Bonham founded the company. He had three sons and they, uh, they were uh, Peter, Ted mm. and William Bonham. William Bonham was my grandfather. Yeah. Peter Bonham was Peter's grandfather and pretty yeah. much it's then been passed down through that side. Um, uh, Peter had uh, Peter had Nick Bonham, and that's Peter's father. And William Bonham had John Bonham, and that's my father. And that's really how it comes to to be how it is. Yeah. Fantastic! I bet you can yeah. trace your family tree back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's been an exciting history. You know, yeah. it's, it's had its ups and downs, but generally, you know, we, uh, you know how things are today. We, you know, Peter and myself, we get on very well, and we, you know, we both. Um, uh, you know, seem to have a similar vision for what we want to do with the company actually. So we want to build on it and hopefully, you know, we pass it on to the next generations in a better condition than we inherited it. So Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was going to mm. say, um, fourth generations, um, f few and far to uh, come, come by, isn't it, these yeah. days? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, so you've mentioned that aerospace is quite a big area of industry that you're working in at mm. the moment. Um, what what would you say? Um, what would you say is a focus moving forward? Is so it's to broaden the aerospace markets and focus a lot more in that area, or um, obviously keep your eggs in different baskets and keep spread uh, spreading across different industries? Yeah, years ago actually, I mean a lot of the focus was actually on the the automotive industry. You know, and this is uh, all to do with the way that cars were manufactured. You had transfer lines, and in these transfer lines, you had fixed string, which required jig bushes and jig bushes are one of our, our main products. Mm. In the United States they call them drill bushings which is slightly different terminology but you know a jig bush and a drill bushing are the same thing. Yeah. Um, because uh, of the way cars are completely, you know, it's a completely new way of manufacturing cars now so it's really eradicated the requirement for, for jig bushes or drill bushings. But in the aerospace industry, you know, because obviously we're manufacturing far bigger parts, you know, you still have this fixed string and there's still a requirement for fixed string. Mm. Um, and the demand for aircraft over the next 10 years is to, you know, is to grow and, you know, I think overall over the next 10 years, you know, they have to double the number of aircraft in the sky. Mm. And so this is pretty much a, a target market for us. Mm. Um, and in the United States, you know, there's new areas of aerospace which are there, um, you know, there's quite a lot around the St. Louis and Kansas area. Um, tra traditionally, most of our businesses have been in the east of the United States, but we're beginning to find more and more customers further west now, you know, all, all involved with the aerospace industry and that's what we're targeting. So Charles, um, I see you've brought a few products in today um, to show and tell us a little bit more about, so I wondered if you might go into a bit more detail on them. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, we have uh, four main uh, product lines really, I mean, actually we have a, a big catalogue with uh, over 285 products in, in the catalogue. 
but really, I mean, there's four main product lines, which are our main products. Uh, the main product line really is uh, the jig bushes, the drill bushings. Okay. Uh, where obviously, you know, as I've previously explained, we're, we're targeting the aerospace industry with, with these products. Mm -hmm. Um, but also there is another growth area where there's a composite in industry. So when the manufacturing composites and composite moulds, uh, they don't use them as a drill bushing, they use them for al alignment and positioning in the, in the composite moulds where, you know, instead of putting a drill through them, you, they put a, dab, you know, a pin through them and that, that's positioning the moulds. Mm. There's also the, uh, with aerospace with fixturing, I mean, what a drill bushing does, it just, you know, allows a, it allows people to drill consistently in the same place over and over again or you know where, you know for precise accurate drilling that's where you use, where you use a drill washing mm. um, the, the here's some examples of a drill bushing this is these are some drill bushings here um, and really um, quite often this style of drill bushing here I and mean, this will probably sit inside another drill bushing and then you'll clamp it uh, you know with a with a lock nut that'll be held in place and then the drill can go through the drill bushing and that uh, you know, for accurate drilling. Okay. There's a serrated type of drill bushing. As I say, these are, seem to be quite commonly used in the composite industry today. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's pretty much the drill bushings. Um, another product range we do are dowel pins. Um, and th it's very varied, the industry for dowel pins. I mean, we're, again, you know, still supply quite a few to the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. We supply quite a few to, you know, companies where, you know, such as, you know, Caterpillar or JCB or John Deere, they may have a requirement. So when you have assemblies and people are um, assembling, I don't know, maybe an engine or something, you'll, you'll probably have certain parts where you need to get precise alignment. So they, for use for positioning, aligning, Many different applications for dowel pins, but that's pretty much what a dowel pin's use, use for. Okay. So that, that, that's the dowel pins. Again, it's a big product line for for ourselves. You know, we have all the uh, imperial sizes in stock. Not many people do now. We've got all the metric sizes in stock, different standards, European standards, British standards. You know, we, we have them all on the, all on the shelf in the UK. Mm. Another product line which is fairly big for us is we do shim to customer drawing so what, what a customer will do is they'll send a drawing through to us and email it through and it can be any shape any size um with the shim and what we do, you know in bonham in turn we have a press shop where you know we just stamp out really whatever quantity the customer is looking for i mean typically you know sometimes we can sell one piece five pieces i mean sometimes you know uh you know a thousand ten thousand pieces that's what we do uh, and we you know offer uh, you know all, you know, all types of steel. Uh, we do offer brass, copper, stainless. If I can pick it up, there we go. Uh, yeah, that one's you know brass there. Mm. Um, yeah, so you know, it's really what a customer's looking for. And the, the, again, the, these are generally used in assembly. So if someone's assembling something and they're trying to get an exact, um, you know, size thickness, they'll, they'll put by you know a pack of shims and they'll put together you know to get the you know a lot, a lot of maintenance applications as well. Uh, for the shim, so uh, that's the shim it. material. Well, it, it's well, sorry, you're about to show something else. Yeah, and then, then another main product actually is the, the Koenig expander plug. Mm. Uh, and the slight difference with the Koenig expander plugs, whereas we manufacture most of our parts, you know, the jig bushes, the dowel pins, and the shim, you know, where we specialise in, you know, hardening ground parts. The Koenig expander plug, uh, we're the UK agency, so um, the Koenig expander, what, what this is, it's a system for sealing drilled holes and how it works is with the Koenig expander with a, a punch you press the ball bearing into the cup it, it expands and it seals off a drilled hole so you don't need to um, it, it does away with having to lock tight a hole it's, it, you don't have to use a, a grub screw you don't have to thread a hole it will go directly into a drilled, drilled hole you can seal it off and it'll uh, and it'll take about 350 bar to blow it out so the, you know it's for high pressure applications Originally, it is used in the hydraulic industry, and it's still where we do sell most of these Koenig expander plugs. Uh, they're hundred percent inspected. It really is a zero defect part. Mm. Um, but increasingly, actually, we find more and more applications in the automotive industry, and uh, the Swiss in, um, the Swiss manufacturers that they're targeting the automotive more. They're finding a lot of applications in. The automotive like BMW, I think BMW use about five million pieces a year. Mercedes Benz, a similar quantity again, and, and we're beginning to find a few applications in the UK as well, which which is good. So, um, uh, and there's an, another style of Koenig expander plug, where this works similar to a pop rivet. You know, it sits inside a hole, and with a setting tool, it pulls the sleeve, 
the mandrel through the sleeve and at the point of uh, the, the, the plug expands and then it breaks off and that seals the, the drilled hole. So, you know, and it's a very good product line for us and it makes, you know, it makes a, you know, quite a sizable part of our business for us, so. That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, it's, well, as you've just shown, it's uh, quite a variety of products mm. really, isn't it? Mm. Um, and I guess aerospace automotive are quite big industries mm. anyway. Um, so kind of, I wanted to talk a little bit more about moving, well, moving into 2017 and uh, the next five years. What is the plan for you to reach the growth um, that you're looking to reach and uh, how do you plan to get there? Yeah, I think um, really one of our big target markets over the next five years is going to be the United States of America, you know, particularly the aerospace industries. We're going to keep uh, chasing the aerospace industries. We've got a good network of sales reps out there in the United States. We have um, 12 sales reps, uh, what you call manufacturers reps, you know, they, they represent a number of product lines, ours is a number of one of a number of product lines. But it, in the most part, that works fairly well for us. Um, we sell to the distributors, but what these guys do is they're targeting the aerospace industry, and that's where we really see our future, you know, the um, high-end tooling products that we're trying to get into the aerospace industry, that's what we're targeting. Mm. There's a lot of growth. I mean, the good thing about the United States uh, for, for our company is we are, you know, a fairly small player in a very big market. So, um, you know, we see a lot of potential to grow there. Um, we seem to get a fairly high price for, for the products out there. And, um, you know, that's really what we're going to be ch chasing over the next five years. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah, let's hope that we keep... Uh Good relationship, it's a good trade deal with yeah. America, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm sure will, will be good moving forward. Um, anyway, I, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming along today and uh, talking a little bit more about Bonham and Turner and um, what you're manufacturing. That's what this channel is for in the end, it's to meet Britain's makers. So um, I'd like to implore anybody else who's looking to get on the channel and talk a little bit more about their business to contact uh, us on uh, either here or here as you can see the, the number or contact one of the MIM team and mm. uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you and uh, thank you again Charles for coming uh, on no, today. Thanks for, Cheers, yeah, thanks thank for you. having me on it. Yeah, Cheers. thanks. Bye -bye.